I coach couples using bedroom cameras. So we put security cameras in their bedroom that filmed 24 seven. And then they would have They would perform different assignments. Like if I asked them to do this or try something, they would go home and do it. And then I would take those clips and use them in my coaching sessions to help them to get better in bed. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about the show is that, you know, a lot of what I do, almost everything that I do for, for coaching is done over Zoom or over phone call. Like I don't, I'm not with my clients in person and I, I don't get access to like that kind of behind the scenes footage. And I had been doing that for several years before we ever put cameras in anyone's bedroom. And I I wasn't totally sure if it was going to make that much of a difference. And as soon as I got the first footage back, and you know this because you work on camera, right? Like a video is worth a million words, right? So I was able to really get in and get really specific and give advice that was super tailored because when we're having it is very difficult later to describe that experience, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and I knew this from doing research. I was part of a study where we were trying to like pinpoint the moment that uh, an STD is is transmitted from one person to another. And when you ask people, like, okay, what happened? Like, you made out, and then this, and then the toy came out, and the lube came out, and then I think we were in missionary, and then this, and then I don't remember, and then she came, and like, it's a very complicated, nuanced thing that's happening to us, and it's very difficult to recall. Yeah, because you're like in the moment, hopefully, hopefully right? You're in the moment. Yeah, if you're yeah. tracking it too much, you're probably not having a great time, either. right? Right. So, having the cameras helped me to get beyond what people can describe in words and just go straight to what was actually happening. Mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting. I don't. When when I was reading about this and about, you know, what you did for your show, it made me think about, I don't know if you know this, but I had a show for Playboy TV where I did the same thing, but not. I watched people's at home sex tapes and I critiqued it. However, I didn't critique the sex. I critiqued the um, the visual like the filming the filming yeah (laughs) so i would talk about like the lighting i would talk about the sound i would talk about the cropping and stuff like that and then we would bring them in and then i would produce a professional sex tape for them maybe we should team up yeah we could do because we're bringing like the whole between both of us we've got the holistic yeah here's how we could i will say though that like (laughs) i think that you probably would have been really helpful in that situation because it was um, it was very difficult for the guys to perform mm. on camera under the kind of because they're amateurs, of, right? Like they're not. Yeah, they, they'll want like the rule was that they could never have done any kind of like scene before, and a lot of them were swingers, so like they went to parties and they like had in front of other people at parties, different. so they thought they could do it. Completely different experience. Yeah, yeah. and a lot of guys uh, would like fail. And there was a lot of awkward. It was one. It was there was a lot of uncomfortable mm-hmm. moments. There was a lot of times that I would have to tell people, "Your this isn't going to work. Let's stop pretending that it will." Right. And uh, we're going to shoot it in a way that makes it look like it's working, but it's not. And you and your girlfriend have to pretend Imagine. like you're having great right now yeah even though like both of you are like dying of shame <sighs> in front of all these people like it was it was rough yeah. i feel like i might have like destroyed some relationships <laughs> you know what i mean it was meant to be yeah you know? i would have loved to be there to to pull them aside and coach them and yeah i mean i do feel let's like do a breathing exercise let's see if we can drop you into your body let's back up and try something else mm-hmm. i think also too like there's probably a way to film this that wasn't so that was more intimate yeah um than it was but it was a fun show and i had a, a lot of i am so grateful for the experience and it's funny because i still get a lot of people writing to me who who watch that. it it was called adult film school oh, I love but the that. shooting of it was well, I think people underestimate Rough. how much a camera changes everything. Yeah. You know, even just one, let alone a whole set. I think honestly, too, what really got to people was the silence. Mm. Because like when you're at a party, there's lots of people. There's a different, first of all, totally different vibe, right? There's yeah. music in the background. People are intoxicated. Yeah. You've you been drinking. There was no, it's dead silent. Yeah. And there's a guy with a boom standing <laughs> over you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so, um, yeah. It's so, different. So different. Yeah, it doesn't kind of translate same. in all, you know, set and setting. No. It, it's not the same everywhere that we go. It's not the same at home as it is at a party as it is on a set. Yeah. So that kind of leads to my question about, um, you know, right? So like, is, so many people want to know, like, is like real? Should I be having like a star? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, 
by and large, if I had to answer that with a single word, I would say no. But there is a lot of variety. In so mm -hmm. like some really does look like that people at home do have. Mm -hmm. And there's also such a tremendous range of what can look like, you know, for the most part, it's really focused on course, right? Because that's what we can see on camera. We can actually like watch body parts mm -hmm. smashing together, right? But like it also includes the energetic connection between two people, like the feeling that's going on, the emotional connection, the mental connection between two people. It also includes all of like the sensual touch and the way that the sheets feel and the way that your hands feel and the the way that we're like touching and grabbing and on each other. It also includes like the 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 mental aspects of like what are we into? What's our connection? What's what's taboo about this? It it there's so much going on that just can't be visualized. Mm. And so just by consequence of the medium, because we're talking about video and audio here, we have to focus on the things that we can see and hear. And so it misses out on the things that we can feel. And therefore, people get way overly focused on what it looks like. Mm. And and they forget about this is primarily when you're with a lover at home in private and no one's filming, mostly about what it feels like. Yeah. And I think that you know, this is why having a wider variety of opening up people's minds about what is is beneficial for everybody yeah that that's so true i've never had anybody kind of describe it in that way but that is so incredibly accurate yeah so um what is the biggest issue that the couples you coach deal with when it comes to their lives mm. you know it's funny because we i hang like this is the sign outside of my door right and people come to me because that's the thing that is obviously going haywire when they come to me, right? Like, it's very easy to pinpoint. Again, we can see it. My, the evidence is that I'm not getting hurt. She's not hurts. We want to have uh, at different times or one of us wants it more frequently than the other. But all of it kind of comes down to what people have self-diagnosed as incompatibility or dysfunction, you know, as the case with like dysfunction or, or premature but actually what tends to be going on underneath is a lack of self-knowledge. Like people don't really know what works for them, what really turns them on, why they really are getting turned up. Like they have an idea of what it is, but they don't actually have the, the education or the awareness or the wherewithal to or they actually... feel ashamed about it and they don't want to talk oh, about it. Oh my God. It. Or they can't separate that from the way that they were raised or the culture that they live in. Right. Mm -hmm. So they self-diagnose as there's a problem here. And that's the reason that they come in for coaching. But usually what actually we're working on is again, self-awareness other awareness and communication between partners and then creativity, right? Because again, if we're so focused on look this way or it's about this, like when we are, when we don't have access to all of that creativity, it's almost like when you're in fight or flight mode and you get sort of like tunnel vision and you're just so focused on this one thing, right? And you mm -hmm. forget that everything else exists. Like you're overly focused on the problem or the argument or whatever it is. Like there's so much more that's available, but unless you have somebody to help you get that perspective and back out and like regulate so you don't feel like you're gonna die when you're thinking about this, mm -hmm. like, when we have access to all of that creativity, that's where good communication comes from. That's when we can like really pause and like go, oh, does this really turn me on? Or have I just been told that this should turn me on and it's not working for me? So I think there's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. I really think there's nothing wrong with you. Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.